Hello there and welcome to another TapForms tutorial video. Today I'm just going to be going through the basic fields that you can choose to add to any of your forms in order to customize them. So let's just get started. I'm going to come down here and create a new form. Let's call it test form. That should do. I'm just going to leave it as uncategorized and go straight into the field properties. So to start we've got one default field sitting here that is a text field. Text fields are pretty self-explanatory. It basically just allows you to type in a small amount of text, good for a title or a name. Now what mask field value means is basically if I check this box here, whatever you type into that field is going to be protected over here. It's just going to show up as stars or dots. And of course you can encrypt it as well. Place a default value. I'll say this is first name. As well, you can choose a predetermined pick list. Um, these are just ones that I've got here, but you can edit and create more yourself. You can auto capitalize words or sentences or all the characters, and you can turn on autocorrect and show title on list V, which basically just means if I check this, that the name is going to show up here on the list view. So moving on, I'm gonna come over here and create a new field. And I'm just going to work my way down this list and kind of show you what each one's all about. So a number field is, again, it's basically just what it sounds like. You can use it to type in a number. So let's just call this uh, age, I guess. I'm kind of just going by creating a contact form, but, I mean, you can do anything. So as well, you'll notice here a bunch of the options available are consistent throughout the fields. Another thing that you can do with numbers is you can choose the format. So say I want this age to show up as a currency which obviously doesn't make very much sense, but if you were using it for net worth or something, you can change it to a currency, set your two decimal places, so that when I come in here and type in a value, say 500, it's going to show up as a monetary value. Yes, this person is very, very rich. So moving on, I'm going to come and I'm going to create a date field. So this might be birth date. And that's pretty self-explanatory. You can default it to the current date. However, if it's a birth date, that's not going to make very much sense. So next we've got time. Again, it's pretty much the same idea, except this one's going to show up as hours and minutes rather than as a date. Then we can set date and time together in one field. And next we have audio recording, which you cannot actually record on your Mac. So if you want to have an audio recording field, you will have to sync from an iOS device on which you've already recorded that audio. As for the calculation field, I'm going to go into that in greater depth in a separate video. So for now, I'm just going to skip over it. The check mark is a pretty simple field. It basically allows you to have some sort of check. So this might be married. And next we have contact, which basically allows you to add a contact into your record. Now drawing is another field that acts in the same way as the audio recording. So you'll need to sync from an iOS device if you want to have that drawing field populated. You can still create the field on here However, you cannot create the drawing on your Mac. And then we've got email address, which allows you to link an email address to your record from which you can easily just click and open up a new email to said person. And I'm going to create a file attachment, which allows you, of course, to attach a file to your record. Now, link to form is another fairly complicated field that I'm going to go into in a separate video. So then I'm going to go to location, which allows you to link a location into your record. A note field is used for when you want to add slightly more text than simply just this text field. And as you'll see, it works very similarly to the generic text field with the options. You can mask the field value, you can auto capitalize, etc, etc. The phone number is what it sounds like. You can add a phone number into your record. You've got photo, which allows you to attach a photo to your record. You can choose the thumbnail size, depending on how large you want it to show up. I'll choose just a small, discrete one here. You've got rating, which allows you to set a rating for your record. And here you can choose what you'd like it to be rated out of. Five, ten stars, maybe two stars, nine stars, really whatever you want. 
Now a section heading is basically a good way to separate your fields. You can disperse them throughout here and each one will act as obviously a heading for that section. So I might call this one further info and I may place that maybe after their name. And then if I want another one, and let's say that's even further info, and I could put that before maybe the location. And finally, you've got website, which works very much in the same way as the email address where you can link a website and then you can easily click on it and it will bring you straight to that website. Okay, so I've pretty much got every field here and I'm just gonna go through them briefly and show you how each one works. So there you go, you've got your form set up here. Got your title test form at the top, as you can see here, we have our headings separated right where we placed them. So I'm just gonna move down here and with the date, as you can see, there is a handy little calendar that pops up here. So maybe John Doe was born March, 16th 1987 now if that's your birthday that is a beautiful coincidence and a uh, happy birthday in March and down here on the time clicking the calendar brings up this fancy little clock which you can drag around to the time you would like maybe this is the time John Doe was born and that was at 444 in the morning so then you've got the date and time together in the same field and that brings down an even bigger one that includes the calendar and the clock, as well as a reminder. So you can tell tap forms to send you an alert whenever this event comes along, which is quite handy. So let's just say that's now. And as you see, there, I just got my alert. The checkbox is pretty self-explanatory. John Doe is married. I check it. If he's not, I uncheck it. Now for contact, I'm going to come over here and click this button is going to bring up my address book. So I've got John Doe sitting right here. I'm going to select him and there he comes in with his photo. Now the ever elusive John Doe has never actually allowed me to take a photo of him so I'm just using this placeholder if you don't mind. But now when I come and click back over here it's going to bring up all of his contact information. As well you can edit it straight from inside tap forms. You can change any of that info. Now I know this field just said drawing here, but that was my mistake. I forgot to change it back to email before I finished editing the form. So you've got your email here. You can type in John Doe at email.com. And then if I come and click the email button, it's going to automatically create a new message right to John Doe. For the file attachment, if I just come over here and click this button, it's just going to open up this little box here that allows me to choose the file that I'd like to link to my record. So I'm just going to choose that. And as you can see, it shows up there. If I click on this guy right here, it's going to actually open up the program that's going to allow me to read it. So coming down here to the location field, following the pattern, I'm going to come and click on this little globe and it's going to place a little pin down at your current location. Now this is not my current location because I didn't want to advertise that to the world. So do not try to find me at this address because you won't. But from here I can drag this pin around and place it wherever I like or I can specifically type in somewhere that I like to find. So if John Doe lives at Disneyland I can search for that and it's going to place the pin right there. Right at Disneyland. And I'll just save that. And from here I can edit the title so I might just want that to say simply Disneyland. So then when I open it back up it's just going to say that. The note field is the same deal. I'm going to click on this and it's going to bring up this notepad in which I can type anything that I like. So maybe I've got some notes on John Doe. And you can really put anything in here that you like. Maybe a diary entry or just whatever you need. So I'll click that and save it. And the preview is going to show up right there phone number I can just type that right in. So I'm going to type in John Doe's real phone number and when I click out it's going to automatically format that for me. With the photo field you can either choose a file from your computer or you can take one from the eyesight camera using this button here. But I am just going to bring in a picture of John Doe's favorite movie. And if I click this little eye here it's just going to pop up a nice big preview window for me to see.
Rating is pretty self-explanatory. Maybe I think John Doe deserves a solid seven out of eight stars. And then for website, you can really type in anything as long as it's a valid URL. Let's just say apple.com. So now when I click on the little internet icon, it's going to open up the internet and bring me straight to Apple. And that's about it. You've got all your basic fields that you need to create a great form. As I said, some of those more complicated ones are gonna have videos of themselves. So keep an eye out for those. They'll be coming pretty soon. And I'll see you on the next one.